first lesson comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. And he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord your God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole houses of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely." Therefore prophecy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord. Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, verses six through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. 
If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson is according to St. John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. And Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha had heard Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, 
unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, this is Pastor uh, Mike Lemke, uh, the transition pastor at First Evangelical Lutheran Church in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, with uh, a word for the day and some songs for the day. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we're celebrating uh, Youth Sunday, so the kids are going to be preaching. Uh, I'm off the hook in that regard, but I wanted to share a little bit about the, uh, the gospel lesson for today as Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead in this Lenten season. It's the time to think about who we are, but more importantly, what it means to be alive in Jesus. Uh, just share a song with you now called Keep Praying." Keep praying, don't stop. When time is up, oh, you think you're gonna drop. Never cease, never quit. It's so easy to forget to pray. You can't run on your own steam. It's part of the life stream. the way we want to begin really every day uh, with our prayer. Really, as we teach the confirmation kids, it, prayer is talking to God. It's having a conversation. It's that one-on-one -on -one time. And that one-on-one -on -one one -on -one time with God can draw us in to community. That's where we see our Lord as we uh, read uh, about the story of Lazarus. And we call it the uh, raising of Lazarus from the dead, but it's really about Jesus becoming, uh, bringing Lazarus to life. It's about Jesus and it's about life. It's about Jesus and it's about relationship. Too often we focus on the dead stuff in our lives, things that have died, relationships, uh, our own uh, problems things that cause us, you know, where we feel like we've died on the, on the inside. That's focusing on the darkness and on death. Today, we want to focus on life. Jesus goes to the town of Bethany, which is only two miles from Jerusalem, and he's greeted there by Martha. And then Mary comes and uh, responds uh, to, to Jesus. Both Mary and Martha confess that they believe in Jesus and Jesus, in the context of that conversation, says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me should never die. And that's the focus of this 
story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead back to life on this earth. But Jesus is talking about not only our life on this earth, but eternal life. Jesus died on the cross for us for eternal life. I want to share a song with you uh, that the the kids are going to be singing in church this Sunday. And I've enjoyed uh, uh, learning this song uh, by uh, Laura Daigle called uh, Come Alive. today in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now I pray that God would give you joy for your journey and strength for your day. 
Amen.